Hello everyone! Welcome to the MTG Paper Legacy July League Playoffs. This is the quarterfinal round tier um, with Care on the left, Shadow on the right, uh, Barricade versus Monogreen Post, and my name's Chaotic Bear. I'm here with Dr. Leo. How's that front-loaded intro for you? That's, uh, that's a lot of all-in-one, but yeah, so what's important here is understanding that you know, this is uh, from the MTG Paper Legacy Discord. We're uh, featuring our, our league finals. And one of the important things about when you're coming to the leagues here, you have to understand if you're going against care, you're going to get this three, four uh, color pile that is just good. I don't understand how it works. It just wins all the time. If you want to check out our invitational when we last did it, amazing amazing performance by care in that uh in that invitational but it's a it's gonna be an interesting match because post is just designed to like beat up on like pile of cards yeah post just gets access to so many incredibly powerful plays um cares deck here i mean care is a great player i've gotten to watch him play several times now um both here invitationals uh i think even during the weeklies i think he's uh taken down a weekly or two uh so great player but you know all these these crazy six plus mana spells that shadow plays you know care has got some some counterplay in there as well uh with various uh, utility lands and ways to find them so um, i mean there's only so much an endurance to do versus emerald alien sword like if you're hard casting <laughs> ever definitely like, it, it, you're not really gonna do much uh just the the tw uh, I've always said it before, 12 post top decks better than any other deck there is. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that we're talking about like a deck that does not care if it hits land drops off the top. Because yeah. it just go, okay, I, that just increases my mana more. And then eventually they're going to either use a, uh, what's called, the Ayabugan to tutor out something like an Eldrazi, something big, or they're going to hit a prime time, slam more uh, lands, and just call it good. Yeah, uh, it's uh, con playing against this deck is a constant frustration for me because you know you, they play a must counter on turn four, so you counter the must counter. They play a must counter on turn five, and you've been countering for a while, so you've got a second counter, and they play another must counter, and you like, okay, well I can spell pierce this, like finally got to cash it, in, and then they just, then they just slam eight mana Ugin, and you're like, well, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, why do you have why point... do you have all these in the same deck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So important to know, this is the mono green version. So mm -hmm. it's a green sun zenith deck that it uses Remnant Up Excavator, Rex Sage, uh, Prime Time. There's an Endurance in here, as well as Elvish Reclaimer. So both these decks are going to be relying on that very powerful one drop from M20 that has inspired so many archetypes. Yep. I've honestly, I bought a, a playset because I was like, yeah, this card is busted. Yep, I've got mine sitting in a binder as well, waiting to be to be used. Unfortunately, they. They don't quite fit into my like favorite strategy of four color loam just because they don't play with chalice um but they'll get some play one day so but. importantly here as well with titan pose this is a three urza saga deck mm -hmm. and there's a lot of good one drops in here not including the one retrofitter foundry which i think everybody's required to have and one that i will continue to eat a crow on because i said the card was bad and yeah, yeah. Four, uh, four Urza Sagas on Kara's side as well. Um, has uh, He's got Mox Diamonds, Curse Scroll, Pithing Needle, Shadow Spear to go get, and the Titan Post deck just has, well, I guess Expedition Maps and Pithing Needle, but Retrofitter Foundry is the, the only one of Silver Bullet. You're, you're trying to cast green, 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 white, double green, green, uh, blue cards, and you're somehow able to slam four Urza Saga into the deck. Yeah, man, like, it's, it's, it's super greedy. A lot of... Oh. A lot of like even uh, some of the four color loan lists have moved to Urza Saga, and I've got mine just in case, but I'm not ready to make that leap yet. Oh, I've I've been jamming it's, it. It's in Value Stand Town. Still. I've been jamming but. in Standstill. There's nothing better in the world than going turn two Standstill into turn three play Urza Saga. It's just <sighs> oh. Yep. We see uh, Kara starting us off here on the play. I'm gonna green sun for zero. Go get that Dried Arbor and pass turn. Yeah, there's a. I guess both players here have a lot of potential options for utility lands. Uh, I think Care is focused a little bit more on being able to to go get them with and has more stuff like Life from the Loam for value. But Shadow has the Prime Times that also does Tutor Mount and Expedition Maps. So um, I would like to say boo on Care's choice in Dryad Arbors. It's just 
the new I, border. I'll say I won't criticize Care, but I do have my favorite. <laughs> oh, I have a uh, Japanese a original art that's like my go-to. Yeah. But uh, oh, oh, turn to Saga with the mana uh, to activate it into a Sylvan, beautifully altered library. So much respect and yeah. a Gilded Goose. Wow, a lot going on on this uh, turn two here. So shout oh, out to deck. Oh, I was gonna say Shadow. Uh, that's a just found a Clod Post turn one, which is a great land to find. But Kara's going so, off. So this is the. So when I talk about this deck during the Invitational, my main comparison is how my mindset when I was building a Neoform, uh, the Seagate Storm called a New Neoform combo deck, originally was I have to get to three mana, and this deck seems the exact same way. So many different ways to cheat on uh, cheat your way to three mana between Green Sun Zenith, Dryad Arbor, Mox uh, Diamond, mm -hmm. as well as the fact that you can see, even say that Elvish Reclaimer er, and Gilded Goose are both mana dorks. So it's one of those things that I really do think that this deck requires to get to three mana no matter what, mm -hmm. and it does it very well. So uh, Carrie's going to untap here. Didn't have the mana to. Oh, never mind. I thought was uh, taking up to three on that saga, but it's far too soon for that. Uh, taking That's a look with, pain phase. yep, taking a look with the Sylvan Library, um, and then we'll tick that up. I, choosing to just uh, take all three there, so either something he really wants, or there's no way to clear what's left. One of the two. Yeah, they uh, they're aggressively going with the Sylvan Library now. One thing I will say is if you're an Uro deck, that's completely fine because you're just going to mm -hmm. regain that back as you just jam Uros. No Uro at all in this deck. Yeah, you don't need it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, finds a Yavamaya there to, as another land just passes back. Um, yeah, so for the record, uh, players do have each other's deck lists. These are open deck lists, and if you check the video description, uh, we have deck lists down there for you as well if you want to follow along at home. Uh, Ves Ooh. Vesuv over there, no. along with a Glimmer Post. No, it was a Glimmer Post. Oh, I'm Glimmer sorry, the Vesuv was last turn? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yep. So three? seven mana over there? Yeah. Yep. All right, well, what can we get to do with seven mana with no green, though? That's important. Uh, uh, not a ton. Yeah, and that's one thing that I've heard. Com uh, so Malfi, who's famously a colorless post player, mm. uh, Malfi swears there's by the colorless variation because of the fact that this exact same thing can happen, where you don't have the green mana and you can't do anything with it. So yeah. it's possible that Shadow doesn't have the green mana. That being said, Shadow could have mapped for a green mana. But... Yeah, could have easily just gone gotten the Avamaya there, but maybe valuing getting the locuses on on a uh, on track first. I mean, I mean, that's seven mana, dude. Like at that point, like what else yeah. do you need? Well, if you crack the expedition map, then that's Ooh. two mana there. You would put Yavamaya down. You'd have access to three mana last turn. Uh, this interaction is important here, though, because of the fact that if that third ability goes on the stack and is sacrificed, hey, uh, Shadow doesn't have a chance to respond because of the fact that that means that Care could find a pithy needle and hit that expedition map. Yeah, that'd be pretty gross. You'd have he he would need to do it this very second uh, exactly to do that. So this is activating to make the construct on the stack. So third chapter is there triggers on the stack. And do we have do we have a, an activation of the expedition map? I would activate it. I would one hundred percent activate it because of the fact that you're gonna need you're gonna need that uh, that expedition map to find an eye uh, again. Yep, there it is. Yeah, so the I mean it could be bait, I guess, but you know, Shadow still has five cards in hand. Maybe there's still something good in there, but boy, it's uh, that's not where I'd want to be. That's a really good name. It's Expedition Map. Do we have a name on this, by the way? Uh, yeah, I think it'll. I think we'll get it there on the screen. Um, I believe it is Expedition Map, but we'll double check here. Yep. That's a massive tempo loss. Yeah, for sure. Because I mean, Shadow didn't do anything except for make land drops the last couple turns. Uh, yeah. 
Yep, and it's, yeah, Shadow just motioned towards the expedition map. Yeah, I would have crapped and cracked it. And that is, that is an important thing to note because of the fact that this has been happening a lot more. I've seen it, it happen, and I've seen people get got by this. Third trigger goes on the stack, resolves. If you don't crack your fetch before then, they could name it and just absolutely murder you. So, playing a glacial chasm here needs to sack a land. <laughs> All right, pithing needle on screen. Uh, doubt we named pithing needle. Uh, uh, so glacial chasm is on the stack. ETB trigger. Yep. Sac sacrifice. And this is a very early oh, glacial great. chasm here. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, has life and loam. I, I mean, I guess you can you can start to rebuy here, but. Uh, yeah, people also get got sometimes. Um, there's not a lot of Esper Vile around anymore, but I think uh, Esper Vile, whenever they played, uh, would activate Ether Vile and then try to get a meddling mage. That's another way people got got a lot. Yep, have to respond to the activation, so it's oh, it's so, one of those tricks. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is endurance and response to life and loam, so they're gonna not fizzle the life and loam because uh, it has dredge, but. Uh, it's just not going to get buy back the Yapamaya, which is important because that Yapamaya allows that Glacial Chasm to tap for mana. Yeah. And now that that Glacial Chasm just nuked the land for no value. Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see how long that uh, that Glacial Chasm sticks around because Shadow doesn't have anything to attack with and Carol oh. wants a swing. Ooh, <laughs> all right. That's a Juka bog. <laughs> Had all these. Maybe that's why Shadow kept this hand because we were we were saying you know this hand hasn't done a whole lot so far, but had a couple of uh, cards yeah. against care and they know hasn't each other's done hands. Anything, taking no game actions. Yeah, it, it, it matter it, just got the rubbins. Yeah, immediately that's letting the glacial chasm go there. Um, yeah, Shadow's my uh, Shadow. Like I got respect for you. Just just nuke the yard, stop it. It's like nah. No, no, no. You're, you're going to feel the fact that you just wastelanded yourself. Yeah. How do you like that uh, the one colored source in the mono green deck is a, it makes black mana? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, once again, I am feeling that there's a uh, severe lack of green mana in Shadow's hand. And uh, could have been solved by the expedition map being cracked. I mean, yeah. Shadow is still very much losing this game. Same. But yeah, it's I mean, one of those things. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's possible if he had cracked it for a Yavimaya, he could maybe he has prime time mana in hand for sure. Uh, I, I guess we don't know what's in his hand necessarily though. Uh, second gilded goose, double the food. Wow, gilded goose is very good with those constructs. Yeah, that's the reason why Care is running them is because of the fact that the gilded goose produces an artifact, which yeah. then increases the power and toughness. Those are some big, chunky constructs. Those are six sixes right now, right? Oh, the yep. five fives, because the seven library is under Pithing Needle. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, they are five fives. And he can make another food here to pump him up to six six, which is what he's oh, doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... I, this, is, this is in fact from Modern, by the way. Modern does this. Yeah. Yeah, but Modern doesn't get to play with Tropic Island, so it's fine. Uh, historic does for some ungodly reason. <laughs> Did they? Is it? Didn't they like put one duel in the format or something funny? Yes, they they put literally only tropical island, and okay. it's one of those historic uh, heart historic cards that creates a uh, like tropical island token, if yeah. you will. I don't know about that shit. I'm a paper boomer. <laughs> yeah, I, I I can't get into it right now either. But I know a lot of it's. I like that we have it as an avenue to get people into Magic who maybe wouldn't have otherwise tried to get in. Oh yeah, definitely. And then eventually they realize that like, hey, <laughs> predatory economy combined with like, hey, you know, playing online or anything like that, and they just like, okay, I want to play some paper, and then eventually they'll find us. Oh, we found a Yavimaya and a Ramanup Excavator for Shadow there. Oh, oh! Finally, have the green. Finally, source. yeah, and finally have all these green, all these green sources now as well. Uh, yeah, if Arena, I don't see Arena ever changing their model. If they ever change it to where players can like actually trade cards with each other or get singles, I know that ruins the whole economy. I think though, among entrenched players, I think it'd be much, much more popular if they did that. Maybe that's not how they make the most money from new players. I'm not sure. 
Uh, it's just one of those things that uh, the the magic model is still fun no matter what because yeah. the magic game system is great. Just the entire engine, the way the model works, the mana base system, it's great. It's one of the best games in the world. That's the reason why we're here talking about yeah. this game, which Care is about to be swinging in with uh, two freaking massive uh, constructs. And uh, this is why Urza Saga is pretty great. Yeah, right now, uh, one, two, three, six. Those are, so he can make both of those creatures lethal on their own. I'm not quite sure how Shadow will get around that. He has one blocker, but... Shadow will. Oh, maybe. I mean, do we have any flash blockers? Uh, oh, we got crop rotation for Glacial Chasm. Get it. All right. That's... Yeah, and we have green mana available because that... Um, that's that a way. Bog is by you. Yeah, sack that uh, Bojuka Bog and then play it next turn and get him. Ooh, get him. Get him. So much value. So we see the full swing here, including the Dried Arbor. Um, from yeah. care. All right. Oh, are we uh -oh. gonna see it? Are we gonna see it? That is. Oh! That is a. Yep. There we go. There's that double master's uh, crop rotation for you. <laughs> Shadow said, "Not today, Satan." <laughs> Maybe he'll mess up and go get like a library of Alexandria instead. Uh, you know, like totally legal in this format, or is that just legal in his story? <laughs> no, I no, it's legal it's legal in vintage. So there oh, is that yeah, yeah, yeah. you're talking about. No, no, it's legal in vintage historic brawl. They put Library Alexandria in Historic? Fuck with you, dude. Oh, I mean, they put all sorts of weird stuff in there, so I don't know, man. So, but, uh, free that, block. That was not you. Excuse me. Oh. Oh, please. So, now just slam an Emeril. <laughs> He's like, what, two mana short in post off that? Yeah. Just kidding. I guess he's uh, he's got eight mana right now, but I mean we got Oh wait, what happened to the um So he had to he sacked uh the glimmer post to the glacial chasm and he sacked the Vajuka oh, Bog to the glacial. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that makes a lot of sense. So we're only at two four or so two, four, five, six mana roughly. If there's a uh glimmer post that puts, oh, wait, the glimmer post can come from uh, from the yard yeah. because there's a remnant of excavator. So then that way we can do. Let's see, each one we're gonna tap for three, three, six, seven, uh, seven, eight, nine. Do we have anything to be done? I mean, primeval titan just like kind of gets there. Yeah, Prime Titan be a sweet draw. I mean, he does have Ulamog. I don't think he can quite... I think you're right. He can't quite cast it next turn, uh, even with another land drop. Yeah, even with the extra land drop. That's, that's three, but, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. yeah. I've been hanging around too many post players lately. I'm trying to get, get better at that map. Yeah. I mean, we could have Greenstone Zenith for Rex Sage blow up the Pithing Needle, maybe. Uh, he, there's a couple options. I thought, I guess, if you can pull off that big of a Greenstone Zenith, you might as well just go get Primetime. I'm very yeah, greedy. Exactly. I just pretty much, anytime exactly. I can make a Primetime happen, I want it. So. Oh, 100%. Like, right now, if you find... Uh, honestly, I kind of like just finding... Urza Saga in addition to anything just because of the fact that you're going to, if you find an additional cloud post in an Urza Saga one, you're going to be able to like, recast as anything but you're also going to be able to create a board that's going to rival cares Yeah, I mean, the, the Glitch Co. hasn't won't stick around forever and those two currently seven, seven six sixes over there uh, that's no, that's not nothing Ooh, found, a, found an excavator of his own on Kara's side though Um I mean, the excavator is okay when it comes to this. It it just, what more does it do for care? I mean, it gives access to the glacial chasm, but there's already one glacial chasm on the board. Yeah, um, it just is incremental value. I think it's not well, doing. Care can even care can even pay a cumulative upkeep cost once. That's true. I mean, uh, he could. He, that would give him access to play it and sack it every turn. He could play it. Uh, on his turn, and then sack it on his upkeep. Uh, he loses the land each time he does that, though. There's no exploration effect there in the deck, yeah. though. 
Yeah, Glacial Chasm is, is tough in... Glacial Chasm is tough in decks that have exploration effects. Sort of like, uh, you know, Life from the Loam and uh, Valakut Exploration get a little bit worse in decks without exploration effects. Yes, very much so. It's the reason but... why Lands runs four of them. Ooh, that card is so good, man. Do you have fancy expeditions? You must have fancy expeditions. Valakut Expedition? Uh, no, no, like the original expedition. Do you oh, have, like, I... the original art. Oh yeah, or... OG all the way. I didn't, I didn't bother when Double Masters came out. Oh, uh, are they like foil or signed hmm. or anything like that? They're printed in Saga, so they don't have foils. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Not signed either. I don't know who the artist on those is, honestly. I just assume everything you have is like fancy there. <sighs> no, I'm. I haven't gone down the uh, signed rabbit hole that deep. Oh, uh, there's just... Green Sun Zenith. All right, we found one. Finally, let's get some let's get some real creatures on the board here. Time, time. All right, we did hey, secret lair. Oh, I will admit, I almost bought that secret lair because of the fact that uh, I love the Uro and the Prime Time. But yeah. I was like, I I just don't want to buy like three of those because I'd want need three Uros, and what am I going to use the Prime Tin for? Yeah. Uh, I ended up getting the arrows as singles because the same reason there, like buying the whole airs just for that seemed insane. Yeah, but the arrows are look. Mm, I love the yeah. arrow art. Yeah, the arrow the art is phenomenal. So get to prime time. Ooh. There's. Uh, that's, is that the Ivugan Expo? That's the Ivugan Expedition and another Glimmer Post. Gotcha. Because so, you yeah. need to make sure to hit those lands. No, no, make sure the life total is high for the glacial chasm. Yeah, needs some need some time here to uh, set up lethal. So, so care pretty much has to play the glacial chasm for land this turn, because if shadow just goes search for uh, Emrakul and cast it, the only thing that's going to save care is that glacial chasm, yeah. saved from the annihilation trigger. Yeah, he doesn't have a way to conveniently tutor it. I don't believe he could also. Um... The one oh, waste. Have... The one. Oh no! I'm talking about care. Care has one oh, waste in the glacial... deck. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And could eat that waste. Eat the glacial chasm. Um, although at this point, shadow has two blockers now, so that doesn't even do yeah. anything. And has also uh, gained a significant amount of life. Yeah, I mean, you do, you do price him into blocking both of them because if if shadow's at eight, then. He can make a food and make it lethal, but we're seeing a green sun zenith for Elvish Reclaimer first. That's a way to get it, but it's sick, unfortunately. Um, yeah, not a not a ton here. Yeah, I'm not seeing either. I mean, all, all, all that said, I mean, Shadow is in a great position, but he he has does he have enough mana to untap and just search out Emrakul? He, he's pretty short on that, right? He'll need prime time uh... to find a couple more locuses. Yeah, but uh, even then, go to your upkeep, sacrifice Glacial Chasm, attack the prime time, same trigger, get two more yeah. locuses, because um, you don't care if the prime time dies or not. Replay, I think, if there is a locus in the yard or anything like that, or you just use the Glacial Chasm to replay it, yeah. uh, activate, because at that point you'll have one, two three, four, five, six, seven, so you only have to tap one of them, uh, the locus to activate the, because uh, it's seven to activate yeah. the item. Yeah, you only have to tap one of them, and then the other one, seven plus, you can at least Ulamog. Yeah, uh, so we will get a little bit, uh, yeah, you're right, the Ulamog, uh, that's the one that has the exile trigger on cast, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So that can get rid of, Carries glacial chasm permanently if he yep. wants to. Uh... Yep. So there's well, the swing at the titan. Yeah, I imagine we're gonna we're definitely gonna ibugan out something this game unless if we have Emrakul in hand, then let's just do it. <laughs> but yeah, because remember, glacial chasm doesn't stop them from attacking you; it just yeah. stops them from dealing damage to you. Well, um, Shadow had to get rid of his own glacial chasm because if you have glacial chasm, you can't attack. Um, so that's why we saw the glacial chasm leave this upkeep. But, Why Caracas? Uh, Caracas can can bounce your. But uh, you have to be able to find Eldrazi it. for multiple triggers. He still has plenty of mana to go search out an Eldrazi. 
But it, he, he can, like, end of turn, go get uh, Emrakul, untap, play Emrakul, Karak is his own Emrakul, etc. if he wants. Um, I'm not sure if that is something, but... Unless, of course, Shadow has it just in hand right now. Never didn't have it, see? Oh, never never didn't, have it. didn't have it. Hard cast, lol, 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 lol infinite terms, <laughs> plus Baracus. GG, easy. And then Bajuka yeah. Bog you. Yeah, being able to just get <laughs> infinite turns, infinite annihilator, and uh, have a free 15 15 uh, out of that seems pretty, pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, free. I mean, he hard cast it. Shadow hard cast it. Okay. Sure, but Shadow had to work hard to get that fifteen mana that he tapped three land for. Yes, he did have to go like go search some stuff out here and there, I guess. Um, but Kara is still not picking it up yet. Uh, gonna fight through this. I'm not. I mean, maybe he doesn't see the Caracas loop yet. Yeah, I mean, Shadow has all, literally all the time in the world here. He will have as many turns as he wants. This is essentially a 16-mana vault key. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that and, also just smacks you for 15. Yeah, you don't even have to, like, find a win con like you do in, uh, in Vintage. You just, it's its own win con. Okay, yep, so yep. We, we bounced the Caracas. Shadow found the line. Care's going to pick it up. Uh, yep. I admire. I mean, I admire the the dedication there to making sure that, you know, he was actually going to find it and not just untap. But truth. So uh, we'll take a look at sideboards here for y'all. Don't forget, uh, you can follow along. Uh, link in the video description, and players have inf information on each other's deck lists as well. Uh, let's go with. Uh, let's go with Shadow's list pulled up here. Uh, three carpet of flowers, a collector oof, one endurance, three force of vigor. One Mind Break Trap, one Spatial Contortion, spicy. Uh, one Tabby, a veil, two Veil of Summer, two Warping Whale. Um, is any of this good against Care? Uh, I do like Tabby, because if, uh, if there's, it will be a price for producing the excessive amount of tokens, and as we saw here, the mana is so tight in this deck. Yeah. So I do like Tabby. I do like Force of Vigor, because Force of Vigoring in Urza's Saga is just... Mm, oh. Oh, that feels good. If you just hit, like, two things off of it, it's it feels so good. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of targets in Karis deck. Uh, the Urza Sagas, like you mentioned, but also three Sylvans, some Mox Diamonds, and three Silver Bullets. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, I'm 100% I'm bringing the three Vorce to figures here. And then, if you want to get really saucy, I could see the Spatial Contortion if you had the stuff to pull out, but I don't think you have the stuff to pull out. Yeah, that would be... that's a That or the uh, Warping Whales are both... Oh, I'm sorry. Reclaimer is a one two or a two one. I always get it backwards. One two. Oh, okay. Well, then never mind. You can't get them with. It uh... probably blocks Goblin Lackey. That's how I always remember it. Gotcha. I was thinking Warping Whale would be pretty sweet, but Warping Whale doesn't actually uh, eat Reclaimer. Yeah, that all makes sense to me. There's not a lot in the deck that is bad to take out, so I imagine we'll just see some trimming, like maybe some once upon a time, maybe. Um... Yeah, Reclamation Sage is still good. Like, every, pretty much every card in the deck is... Well, I, I imagine we'll see some of the trimming on some less good cards here. Uh, but let's take a look at Care's sideboard. A couple of Carpet of Flowers, a uh, Collector Roof of its own, three Damping Spheres, three Crosen Grip, two Force of Vigor, and four Mind Break Trap. Where are you going if you're Care here? All right, let me just put it hard, just hard on the table right now. These four whole breachers are dead. <laughs> dead in the matchup cut them doesn't yeah. matter what the hell you're bringing in just keep bringing anything so we're bringing in the four dampings and the three dampings here obviously you have the room for an extra crows and grip if you want it or an extra force of vigor depending on how saucy you're feeling but pretty much whole breacher is dead and like archon of myria is like three quarters dead as well because of the fact that uh, i mean it's still a two three flyer and reduces them to, to one spell each turn which they cast only one spell each turn yeah or the non-basic land your opponent's control enters the battlefield tab all of them enter the battlefield tab to 12 excuse points. me have Everyone's you seen glimmer back. post oh excuse me hmm. anyways so uh, yeah you're, you, 
Archon is pretty much worthless as well. Yeah. Uh, for like the, the the smallest amount of value you might get for that, like you're cutting the four whole creatures, three Archon, so you have stuff to cut. Yeah. Uh, so I just bring in the extra uh, artifact hate and just go from there. Yeah, I, I think that you have a uh, you've you've got these dummies in the main deck that can win you the game because of combat damage, but boy, those effects are also pretty pretty underwhelming in this matchup. Like the endurance actually doesn't even do a ton. I guess it it turns off Romanoff Excavator out of Shadows deck, but that's about all it does. But endurance is a three four flash beater. That's what matters. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like these creatures have power toughness, but the abilities uh, do not seem that important. Yeah. Uh... The whole breacher is worthless because its ability is mm. is nothing but and that and you need to cut stuff, so like you're cutting a whole breacher, you're cutting yeah. uh, down on the archons. I can see like leaving one in if you really wanted to. Like even some things like script ranger do not matter because that's only in there to block delver. Yeah, um, I feel like I probably want the force of vigor over the crimson grip, but I mean maybe here's what I want. Here's what what I want is for. Shadow to get out a, an expedition map and care with two mana up and care just goes like all right end of turn cross and grip it. Uh, I think that would be very fun, but we'll see if it happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's gonna be really interesting because I also think that this battle can just come down to just a battle of Urza sagas. Mm -hmm. Like the, the fact that the, that each player has a top deck that can produce between in two bodies plus and uh, plus extra in the fact that both of them are running a a two target like curse scroll or uh retrofitter foundry so like extra damage can come through that all in a single land is massive for each of these players so yeah. i i think it's a, it might come down to an urza saga battle yeah the urza saga they're being able to go get the silver bullets is just so massive and we saw i mean uh, that game sort of ended quick because well, quick. It took us half an hour, but uh, it was it was grinding and dragging for the longest time, and then Emrakul just got there. But I mean, I could definitely see this match becoming a real slog between the two decks there if if Shadow can't find a way to get a, a beater, or if uh, to end the game there, or if you know Care trimmed a bunch of creatures and can't kill either. I mean, or we could just stalemate with constructs. Yeah, I mean, there is a little bit of draw power in each of these decks. So the draw power primarily in Shadow is in uh, things like Primeval Titan, Green Sun, Zenith, uh, Once Upon a Time, those sorts of things where, like, you can find specific things. Because, you know, Green, mm -hmm. it draws cards, but not the specific card or cantrip or anything like that. But when we're looking at Kara's deck, there's three Sylvan libraries in this deck, and we saw Kara is mm. aggressively willing to just go for it in there. Yeah, and like I think Sylvan Library is going to be the card that comes out to matter here because Kara can just draw so many more cards over the course of this match. Yeah, I think we are both uh, fans of the the goofy mid range green will kill you eventually kind of decks, and Sylvan Library is such a house in those decks. Oh yes. Sylvan Library is, like, one of my favorite cards, and, and like, I think it's one of those cards that will remain a forever staple in Legacy no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there. I mean, I cannot see them printing a new card that that beats the efficiency of that card. No, there, there literally cannot be unless they printed a one-mana version that also had Carpet of Flowers stapled onto there. <laughs> Oh, I mean, uh, they could give us, you know, a two-mana card that just lets you look at the top three and take two or something. But I mean, it would have to be in a Commander product or something, because they can't put that in Modern. They cannot put that they in Standard. <laughs> they cannot put that in Modern at all. No. Like, a... let's let's be real here. There's certain cards that would be okay to be put into Modern. And Sylvan Library is not one of them. That card is just way too powerful. Yeah. Um, and we, we see its, its price reflects its utility in EDH also, I think, so. Oh, yeah. Whew. Oh, yeah. I, well, to be fair, I bought my first one when, uh, oh, God, it was like, it had just been reprinted, and it was at, at like 18 or 19 bucks. Yeah. And then uh, I got my big boy job, and I saw a fifth edition one, the one that I've always wanted <laughs> with the activated ability for like, I think it was like 40-some-odd bucks. I was like, yes, I have to buy this. Ooh. So... Yeah, 
but I mean worth because of the fact that the fifth edition one is the correct edition one. It's so, hmm. like the only white, uh, only voluntarily whiteboarded card in my deck. Yeah, I mean, they all sort of have their charm. There's also that one, uh, like Commander's Arsenal or something, but I think, I think we know which one is my favorite. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, but okay, okay, just just mm, just uh, just to show it off a little bit. Oh no, I'm just uh, giving you a little crap about your uh, your love of the fifth edition one. That one it, that one is also fun. Well, it's it's just because it's just so ridiculous. Like I want to go activate my, my library. It's like yeah. that's not how it works. Read the card. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, the templating <laughs> is uh, very silly. Sometimes uh, at some point, someone asked me. Uh, what someone library did when I was at a casual legacy weekly here a couple years ago. And I was like, let me just pull up the Oracle text. Cause reading this won't help. <laughs> I remember I was learning how to play with it in a, a, uh, in commander. It was, that was my first time I was ever introduced with her. Like this card is uh, like, what? Uh, and then like the guy's explaining it to me and like how, how it works. And then you could rearrange it. Hmm. I like went through, I was like, Okay, so you have to activate. He's like, no, it's not an activation. It's an accepting of the glove. And it's like, oh my god. And eventually just got so beaten into me when I started playing with it. I was like, okay, now I see how this works. Good. So, pretty productive from Care's side there. Uh, found the turn one green sun zenith as well. Off of that waterlog grove. And it, is this Explain just that. the same game as last last game? Uh, if Care opens up here with Earth Saga, that would be a yes. Yeah, I guess Shadow has green mana this time, rather than Cloud Post on turn one, but... Taking a couple damage there from the yeah. Grove. Did you ever play the Waterlog Grove in Four Color Alone? <laughs> no, I've, uh, I've played off and on with the black-green one in that one, and um, some other deck. I don't remember which... Oh, in Jund. I had one in Jund also at some point. When Uro first came out, I basically went into a, like, Nick Fit lands tutor value shenanigans with some life alone bullshit and uh i loved it it was great at my local and then like my opponent uh, went uh turn one ley line and i didn't have an answer for it and i or turn zero ley line and i was like oh shit this is the bad side of this uh, yeah or uh, probably uh, not as good with uh no graveyard huh so care has found two uh green sentinel there so <laughs> Electing to not cast creatures, but just go find them. It's probably pretty good. Oh, this is the reason why Green Sun Zenith is so good and why it's banned in modern is because of the fact that it shuffles back in. It yeah. goes back into the library so you can redraw it later on. And I mean, there's been times where like a Green Sun Zenith and then shuffle, uh, shuffle, and then all of a sudden draw another Green Sun Zenith next turn. It's like, this feels great. Yeah, it's and like. And also. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, what I was going to say is also you just find everything you want because it finds my Leopold all the time. Like, how do I not love this card? <laughs> yeah, you just get... It's, it's a reasonable tutor for one extra mana, which it just feels crazy. Um, Shadow found an Urza Saga of his own here, though. Uh, Care doesn't have one to match, although can find one off Elvish Reclaimer pretty easily. See if he chooses to do that. Man, uh, Urza Saga have been tearing up the uh, newly legal for this event here, I think. Uh, but tearing up those uh, top eight deck lists. Oh, honestly, the card is so good. Um, like I said, I've been experimenting it with it in the standstill variants because of the fact that you know you don't cast anything, so it's amazing to do underneath standstill. And I, I have to say, it's awoken something like deep and dark inside of me <laughs> that that like actually like reminds me of the miracle top days where you just had someone like hard locked and you're just like felt so disgustingly good about it that's what it feels like yeah it's been a it's been a minute since i've had any desire to play hard control in legacy uh oh i, I used to re I, I used to really love it it just got so frustrating to like play these long these like 50 minute games where you're just in control for the first 49 minutes of the game and you can't find a way to win and you just lose but Sanso at least gets the uh, extra cards over miracles yeah I have to worry about decking myself <laughs> what a problem to have oh yeah oh yeah uh, like honestly there's something primal uh, primarily enjoyable about being able to 
uh, Hall of Heliod's Generosity, Standstills, and Shark Typhoons back on top of your library. Yeah, Hall of Heliod's Generosity is a gross magic card. So, if you're Shadow here, what are you trying to find off of this? Are you going for a... Uh, are you going for a... a it, what's it called? It a, depends uh, on what's uh, in my hand. I was going to say Cloud Post if I feel like I need the mana. Um, if I've if I've sandbagging a couple other lands, it could be any of the utility lands here. Um, like even like Yavamaya for long term setup would be the worst. Sethian stage is here too. We saw Kara copied uh, the Urza Saga over there with that Vesuva. Two two main yeah. deck copies of Vesuva in Kara's deck, um, which I'm not used to seeing outside of um, outside of Twelpos decks. I, I think some lands players will run one in there, but. Yeah, I have no idea why. I um, it it it's so because uh, there's also a Simic Growth Chamber in here. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't noticed that, I did there's not notice that. Sigiri, there's also a Sigiri step. Yeah, Guy Reach Sanitarium was the other uh, funny one I saw, but yeah, a Guy Reach Sanitarium. So my question is, you're a deck that wants green mana on turn one, and you have one, two, three. Four, five, six. I'm throwing Simic Growth Chamber in there. Uh, ten, uh, ten now with Urza Saga. Uh, Eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen lands in your deck that can't produce green mana on turn one. <laughs> like, how? You figure it like, out. Like, how? <laughs> the, uh, the ratio in Loam is also pretty disappointing, honestly. He's got uh, three Mox Diamonds in the deck as well to help out a little bit but okay uh, yeah i mean sometimes you gotta toss hands back you it, it, like you have 25 lands in your deck in this case but sometimes you still have to mull because you're like i've got maze of Ith and vesuva like these are lands i guess I'm impressed that there is room for a bajuka oh sorry i uh, 14 lands throw the bajuka baggage there yeah <laughs> uh and then we have one forest one island and one plains for basics. Yeah, I am man. so impressed. Yeah, you'll get there. It's fine. I, I, oh, finds a wasteland off that, I wish reclaimer. I honestly think that the printing of Yavamaya has done a lot to glue this deck together more than some of the other decks. Uh, both of them in this case, honestly. Um, why, why a wasteland? To hit the... Uh, I'm not the, sure. Uh, if this is at end of Shadow's turn, then he can untap and hit the Saga, denying Shadow the chance to search with it. No, that was because it enters the battlefield tap off the road. Elvish Reclaimer. Yeah, oh, so that was it. That was the end of Shadow's turn. So he'll untap with the Wasteland now, and we'll have the option to hit that Saga. Uh, takes his own Saga up to two. Uh, yeah. that, oh, he'll need a land. If he has a land, he can make a construct this turn. Yeah. Hit the. Hit Shadow's con. Uh, well, it's going to turn into a construct. I, I, if Care doesn't have a land drop here, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. Uh, that would be absolutely hilarious. Just, I mean, sometimes it, if he doesn't have a way to keep Shadow from from uh, winning there, if he does, if he can't develop his own board, then might as well eat the Saga now and get the value. Oh, but... even better. Oh, is Shadow just oh. gonna get him with uh, with a crop rotation in response? Yeah, got him. But that's actually sort of weird. So he's floating a colorless off the saga instead of making a construct. Do you think he's just going to go get another saga off of this? Does the construct matter this early? The Not really. One, one of two. The only wasteland. Sorry, I thought there was two in there for some reason. Uh, Could afford the slot for the thirteenth. Well, man, you construct. you cut a wasteland for Guy Reach Sanitarium. You cut a wasteland for. Uh, Simic Growth Chamber, you cut a Wasteland for Sejiri Step, and suddenly you don't have room for the second, third, fourth copies. Yep, yep, yep. Now that the only Wasteland is in the yard. Oh! Tabernacle, that's... Because one of those lands taps for mana as well, uh, and is a land, a creature as well. Yeah, so, I mean, he could have gotten Urza Saga there, but this means uh, Care. Okay, so Care has life and loam. He'll be able to pay upkeep for both those creatures, but that's gonna that's gonna keep him down if he wants to keep those creatures. Okay. So and we got a uh, 
one two elvish reclaimer coming in and a wasteland for the uh said tabernacle yeah um, at least i hope i hope there's a and that well, he, the he, character doesn't pay for the wasteland he might need that wasteland to uh he might need the wasteland to make a construct next turn <laughs> oh yeah, so that means he'll be making zero contracts off the Service of Saga for its lifetime. He'll get the tutor. Okay, so Thespian Sage copying. Thing. So the Tabby still exists. Tapping yeah. Care down for the turn. And, I mean, Care has to basically pay for the Elvish Reclaimer. Oh, and both lands are going to be sacrificed on the uh, by the main phase. Well, just the Saga will be sacked, right? The Dried Arbor... No, the Dried Arbor has to pay for the Elvish Reclaimer. Oh, I was, I was assuming that he was just going to use Arbor to pay for itself and then Saga to pay for Reclaimer, but... Uh... Yeah, that, uh, that, uh, that works. I mean, I, keeping Arbor around is sort of free. Uh, I mean, but the Arbor just sits there and taps for itself, basically. Yeah, until you can... I mean, he could... I don't know, he has some options. I was going to, like, start naming him, but he can. He, he also has the option to life and alone to get this Wasteland back, to get rid of the Thespian stage. I mean, at that point, you're sitting with a Reclaimer on your side of the board, and the rest of your board is trashed. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, oh, he actually can't do that. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Because he has to tap... No matter what, he has to tap the Arbor. So yeah. he can't blow him here. He's going to dredge it back. Am I missing something? This Wait, math doesn't work. I, I, I don't know. I... I... Okay. I lost my shit when Care went, got rid of a mana source to go find a wasteland. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, mana source don't grow on trees. Yeah, I mean, now... keeping your opponent off the tutor, I, I feel like matters a little bit, but it, it, Care doesn't have anything except for this Elvish Reclaimer here. Um, so, lets the uses the Arbor to pay for the Reclaimer, declines to pay for the Arbor. Now, taking the, this up to three and adding a mana, I assume floating mana there's nothing yeah. else that care can do with it yeah i mean this means he can play a green source and then cast life in the loam but then he's already made his land drop this turn so it doesn't do anything um i hope there's a green source oh i i mean oh oh find the mux diamond off the open claim okay um well i mean green source to cast out life from the loam but that means he's already made land drop for the turn this mox diamond means he might be able to get there with life from the loam and wasteland or he could just get his urza saga back i guess Oh, wait, he didn't ever play Nerza Saga, right? He only copied his opponents. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, there was a... It took me a lot of words to get from... Uh, he can't do that to... Back around to he can't do that. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a very precarious situation. Oh, he, yeah, you got a pitch for that, man. There yeah, we go. Yeah, you got a pitch. All right, all right. I was going to say, where's your pitch? Okay. Then now we do have Life in the Loam going here. Yeah, gonna get uh, you. Got to get all these lands, bro. <laughs> Maybe he's trying yeah, to leave some in there for reclaimer. Uh, no, you got it. You got to get everything. Like uh, he has at this point, you're just praying to keep on hitting land drops. Yeah, he has. Uh, there's Vesuva Heath Wasteland Grove Arbor in there, so if he he can get two and leave three lands Not, in there, why getting back Arbor? Because Arbor, there's a oh Wasteland there. puts itself back. Okay, that's fine. So, he gets to keep the size on Reclaimer, swings for three here. I mean, Shadows... <laughs> is it possible for both players to be on the back foot? I mean, it's like turn five here. <laughs> I, thinking, exactly what I don't have no idea who's ahead. Yeah. I have no idea. Like, I don't believe Care's ahead at all. Well, because, like, every single land Care's ahead has just hit the fuck the graveyard. Yeah. It's like... Oh, no. Oh, 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 no. Oh, that's what I've been All right. For. Well, I was going to say, Kara can at least start, like, loaning these lands back. He has a couple in hand because oh. he loaned last turn, but... The most timely Bajooka box ever. Yeah. Shadow's... So, Shadow has only lands, and Kara has no lands, is where we are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotta, gotta, gotta ask these questions. Ooh. Boy, that Bajuka bug. Both games. Natty both games, right? Yep. Yeah. Natty both games. So now we have a Dried Arbor, which basically taps for nothing. Hang yeah. First. You gotta do it now, though, to, so you can use it next turn. Find the Guild yeah. of Goose. So he'll have access to at least three mana next turn. Uh, we know that there's another... I think he kept the Waterlog Grove 
in hand. Um, I hope there's another tabernacle involved. I just really <laughs> want to be. You think it's going to be Rob? Really you want this to be uh, excavator into? Uh... Oh yeah. Okay. Into Tabby. Oh, I yeah. want. I want this to get just like straight garbage time. Like, you know, four color low mirror match basically. Dude, low mirror matches are so draining. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so right. bad. I've been there before. I've seen that type of stuff, and I've just seen the life drain from people's eyes as they play their matchups. Like, hey, you're punishing fire, you. Okay, I've been responsible to <laughs> get my own punishing fire back. Okay, I'm going to play my knight. I'm going to abrupticate your knight. Yeah, found an Emrakul yeah. off of the uh, Once Upon a Time there. Little short on casting that. Maybe about 12 mana. 12 mana, exactly. Sorry, misspoke, 11 mana. Yeah. The, uh, there's a there's a local player who plays Lance and playing four color loam against him is so frustrating because it's like his deck is the perfect counter. It's like we both have access to Wasteland you forever, except he has exploration, so he gets to do it more. <laughs> his exploration, his Valica exploration, which is fucking. Ooh, I haven't so played good. I haven't played against him since that card got printed, so I imagine it's even worse now. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah. If you haven't played against lands, Valica Expiration lands, it's Ooh. so good. It's brutally good. Ooh. It's such value town. Ooh. All right. Yeah, I mean, combine that with Urza Saga now, it's it's like not even fair. Yeah. Uh, Waterlog Grove was the third land he got from Life and Alone there, so has access to at least another mana producing land. That's nice. Um. Wow, it's turn eight, and there's. <laughs> three total mana sources on the board yeah there's also what uh two power oh i'm sorry i didn't count the uh dry oh, oh wait yeah. gilded goose is zero power anyway isn't it yeah all right so yeah it's an o2 yeah <laughs> I, I have like this game has been ridiculous this has just been you know how like blue decks will have like the flurry on the stack this has just been the flurry of just throwing your lands into the yard yeah. Each player has just thrown so many lands into the yard, and it's just so funny. Yeah, it's honestly a little strange to see, because there's zero copies of Life and Loam in Shadow's deck. I mean, not that he needs it. He has Ramonic Excavator, and he, that's not what he's going for. But my, Loam would be so good here. Is, my question is, is why do neither of these players have have uh, Leyline in their sideboard? Because uh, Leyline in either of these situations has just been like completely just knocked. Well, I mean, not yeah. so much for Care versus Shadow, but Shadow if, uh, Shadow opened up on Leyline. I don't know what Care would have done. Yeah, I mean, I guess with the open deck list, maybe they thought, and like the known meta, they weren't worried about it. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm still a Leyline, Leyline man. It's just, it's so clean compared to everything else. Um, but. Another I fluctuate at my graveyard. Hey, I've heard hot takes that uh, Surgical is dead. And uh, to that response, I would say only if you don't have any form of discard, which most people aren't playing Thoughtseize, him, Cabal Therapy, or anything like that anymore. So, like, yeah. Yeah. I like it better with discard or with counter spells, either way. Um, but yeah, I, I, I still play plenty of Surgical. Um, I think that there's some situations in Legacy where, like, you don't get priority at a time that's convenient for you with surgical. Like against Hogak, it's uh, it annoys me every single time. Um, and I get same with Uro. Um, if if they can cast Uro, then immediately escape Uro. You never get a chance to hit it. Um, but I, I think surgical is still great for Uro in general because it's uncommon for them to have one green blue green green blue blue. So my question is, if you have surgical the Uro and they just like cool invoke endurance. Then yeah, you got me, man. <laughs> like you did it. Nice endurance in the graveyard. Yeah, and like honestly, that's I think that's the reason why is because of the fact that endurance has just become like the more popular form of graveyard hate. Mm -hmm. That being said, famous dredge player Dan TCG has gone to playing Leyline of Sanctity in the board to <laughs> hedge against endurance, which is some of the hottest tech I've ever seen a dredge player play. Yeah, I mean I. I think that, uh, in general, I'm slow to adopt new technologies unless it's a playstyle or a card that I really like. Like, uh, it was not easy to talk me to Ragavan. That card is sweet. Um, but some of the newer stuff... I'm, like, I still haven't picked up Urza Saga in any deck. Um, really? I figured it'd be right up your alleyway. I, I've, I've got them. I just don't want to turn Loam into that. And I don't have another deck that it really fits in great right now. I, I sort of... I have the play patterns in Loam that I really like. And until something is, like, strictly 
better or whatever. And, and until that stops being fun, I'm not probably not going to overhaul it in a big reasonable, way. Reasonable, okay. reasonable. Yeah, I um, I I feel you on this, and you know what? That's what that's what's nice about paper is that you have players like Care, who they have this deck that they love and that they play very well. And that's what they're gonna live and do their life. Like like you're saying with four color loam, you found the deck that you love and you're gonna play with it and just can you jam how it will be. But my only question is, uh, once again, like if it wasn't for this mox diamond, how is Care casting anything? <laughs> yeah, fine uh, yeah, the that life from the loam floating the one man off the Urza saga has been literally the only difference <laughs> here. Otherwise he would have not been casting a bunch of these spells. Um, is he running the the one one split full art Yavamaya non full art Yavamaya? Uh, I think so. As well as there's a one uh, there's a split between the Sylvan Library and then the the one that's altered. Oh yeah, yeah. I I can I can get that. Uh, I I don't love mixing and matching, but I also uh, you know can't afford to have every card I want altered. For the rest of the time. Ooh, did this Elvish Reclaimer come jamming in and it's gonna, just going to get eaten up by this Endurance? Chomp, chomp, chomp. Yep. Oh, get him. Oh, Wait, was no, that? No, no, no. It didn't go in. It didn't go in. Oh, okay. It okay. was just activated for the Abamaya, I'm guessing. Gotcha. Oh! Found the Saga. saga. Is that... Um, oh, duh. <laughs> the Urza Saga makes mana. He, he, he plopped it down and then immediately tapped out for the the uh, prime time and I was like, can you even do that? Oh, there's two tabbies in this deck? What? No. Oh, yeah. There's one in the main and one in the side. Oh, they got me. No, that, I don't see the second one. Wait, where? There's one tabernacle? Yeah. Oh, he made, he endurance himself when he played the endurance. Oh, he endurance himself. Yeah, that oh, is spicy. Oh. I'm into that. Oh. Oh. Endurance plus going. prime time is hot. Oh. Oh, Oof. care. Oh. How do you like all those those creatures? Man, I'm sorry. I, I respect care as a player here. Care has put up some big numbers, but uh, I got a I got a root for people doing cool plays. <laughs> that that was good shit. Um. Uh, by the way, I would 100% swing with Endurance. It's a 3-4. It's crunched in. Like, yeah. You know, you know your opponent's going to have to sacrifice most of, your, most of their board. Because the... What, oh, you know, we're looking at right now the... Uh, the Elf... Uh, well, the, uh, the Dried Arbor is going to have to pay for either the Elf or something like that, because that's going to get sacrificed. There's no reason to keep that card around. It's just going to keep on just having to pay for itself. Mm -hmm. Elf, so you might as well just let it go away. That's going to pay for the Elf. The Scrib Ranger, I could see... Is it, does that bounce itself? Return first, you can... No, and just return a forest you control. Yeah. I, so, I'm I, honestly probably keeping the Ranger before the Reclaimer, just because the Reclaimer can tutor, but I'm, I'm not sure what he's digging for here, but... Yeah, well, I'm saying, you keep the you keep the Elvish Reclaimer. No what, oh, gotcha, gotcha. You, yeah, you sacrifice. Yeah, you're probably gonna end up having to sacrifice the ranger, or you'll pay for use the gilded goose to pay for the ranger. Yeah, uh, unless okay. Like if Care has a if Care knows of a way to well, no, the the one wasteland is exiled. I don't think Care has a way to get rid of this tabby, does he? Nope, it is gone forever. Yeah. Well then, huh. I was, I was thinking that it may be worth paying for some extra creatures if you know you have a way to get rid of the tabernacle. Um, but I'm going to go back through this uh, deck list real quick. Okay, Force of Vigor pitching Endurance to hit the Urza Saga. I mean, that seems meh. And Tabby yeah. Trigger. Um, I think, I mean, we saw for Care how big Urza Saga, like, the, the tutor from Urza Saga is. Um, I think we got to see him do it for Pithing Needle Game 1 and Mox Diamond this game. And it seems like he's, he's going to spend as many resources as it takes to keep Shadow from being able to do that. I mean, to be fair, there's a prime time on the board. They can find another one. Sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um... I mean, I'm not sure what artifacts... Retrofitter Foundry is a little annoying, but I guess um, 
Shadow doesn't have anything that just is lights out, right? The expedition map finds Ivugan and kills you. Okay, but yeah, but prime time finds Ivugan and kills you. Yeah, either or. <laughs> yep. Um, like, is is the yep? Oh wait, no, the Yabamaya is being bounced to hand to. Oh wait, no, trying. All right, so we're going to pay for another creature, Sack the Goose, like you said. So this is paying for one cre Have we seen a payment for the second creature yet? I think the Yavimaya might have paid for the Dried Arbor. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, okay, that's what you're talking about with this group ranger then. Yeah. Gotcha. So, I mean, it's something, but, like, Dried Arbor is just going to cost them way more than it's worth. And it's not like you have a way to remove this Tabby off the board now. One... God, Tabby's just so good. Yeah, it's unfortunate, it's unfortunate this game's recorded, because I think that still puts us back a mana. He needs to have paid three mana for Arbor, Elf, Ranger, and he paid two mana. He tapped the Yavamaya, and he tapped the Gilded Goose. Right? Uh, no, he's able to untap, it, untap the Dried Arbor using the ability from the Script Ranger to untap the creature. But he never tapped it again. To make the third um, mana. So, Dried Arbor taps, taps to pay, pay for itself. Float, mm -hmm. uh, float mana off the Yavamaya. Uh, uh, return the forest, being the Yavamaya, to his hand, mm -hmm. untap the Dried Arbor. Yeah. Dried Arbor pays for itself. Uh, then the mana float off of the Yavamaya pays for the Scrib Ranger. The Guild Goose pays for the Elvish Reclaimer, sacrificing the food. Yeah, but the arbor is still untapped, though. He never tapped it for the second yeah. mana in your situation. Yeah. He only yeah, produced... Well, no, he, didn't, he just had to tap it for the second mana. He just tapped it once and to untap it. Okay, the, I'm with you. Yeah, okay, I'm slow. I'm slow, but yeah. I'm there. All right. No, no, I got you, homie. Like, honestly, this stuff is complicated. And you know where I learned, learned this from? And Beyond Sadistic, Corey, he taught me some Scrib Ranger math. <laughs> There's some stuff that you can do with that card that you don't expect. And Yabamaya, like, gave some stuff to that. Yeah. I mean, the uh, fact that you can untap your cradle, uh, well, like, bounce your cradle, replay it, and stuff like yeah. that, it's dirty. Every, every time I was working the math through in my head, I forgot that Yabamaya made a mana before it got bounced. And every time he told me that he tapped the Yabamaya before he bounced it, it just, like, bypassed all the other data I was figuring out in my brain. You got you, homie. I all got right. you. But found a saga of his own. Great. Yeah, but so, what, what are you going to search for with Elvis Claimer, though? Boy, uh, you're, you don't have a ton of time. Like, Glacial Chasm is something that I'm interested in. I don't have a lot, but I, I just don't want to die. But it's... I was going to say, Glacial Chasm is something I'm interested in, so I don't die from these attacks here. But at the same time, it's not winning me the game. And I don't... Let's put it this way. He doesn't play removal for the the prime time, right? That prime time is just here for the rest of its life. Ooh, that's a damping spare. That's something. It's a little gross. I mean, that. Well, to be fair, the only thing that taps for mana for extra colored or mana, well, colorless mana is the one, one of cloud books that's on there. So yeah, it's only shutting down one land. The rest of the stuff was all hard cast by just like naturally hitting land drops. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna bring up. Uh, Shadow has been missing land drops and has four cards in hand. That is terrifying. That is not, hasn't committed anything to the board. Care has been spinning the wheels, playing the the footsie game with the lands, and now Shadow is going to be untapping with. Okay, so we're tapping down those two oh, mana. So yeah, that's fine. Um, one, um, one I'm... two, three, four, five. I was going to point out the uh, the fun interaction there. It's something we, we have to see with Urborg a lot, but Yavamaya being newer, um, I don't know if I've seen this yet. He uh, Kerr had a Yavamaya out, and Shadow used it to tap his tabernacle for one of his creatures last turn. That's kind of cute every time that happens. Yeah. And so now... Um, did the Scrib Ranger... Or how did the Scrib Ranger die? Did that hop in front of something? Uh, it, it must have. I missed that altogether. Yeah, I think I think it, it hops on me. Okay. And now we have Ayabugan, Urza Saga. And importantly, I don't think Stamping Sphere I don't think it interacts with either one of those cards. Nope. It, nope. Stamping Sphere doesn't do anything to those. Nope. 
So Shadow has got a lot of permanents on this board. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot going and on that, there. And that's a swing for nine. Yeah. Care? Ch <laughs> checking the sideboard there. Uh, did I board that out? Uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, Scrib Ranger should have been boarded out. Just, just saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it's like a neat Ambush Viper that can do some cool tricks with lands, but yeah, I agree it's not like... Viper for a 15-15? It flies, doesn't it? Here's here's what you do, actually. You hit the you float mana in response to the Annihilator trigger, and then you cast the Scrib Ranger, and then block. Oh. Alright, solved the meta. Solved the Emrakul problem. Yeah, although Care, uh, uh, no... I guess this isn't a deck where Caracas would be at its best against a, an Emrakul, <laughs> so... So, we are at, right now, upkeep. Care has to pay two mana to keep creatures alive. Mm -hmm. One of those creatures happens to be a land. Yeah, I wouldn't... What's annoying here is that if he pays for any of them, he has to make a land drop to make a single contract. And I'm going to keep talking about contracts like they're important, but he's not doing anything else for two mana in this deck. So, like, he, he's cast his literal one two mana creature, so. And I want to tabby so badly after seeing this. This is just so dirty. Yeah. For anyone watching, don't forget, we are, uh, we are full proxy legal on the server if you want to proxy up a full 75 or a full 95 or a full 250 like feel free uh honestly i've been looking more and more at yorion just gives you more things to do yeah. and stuff like that okay so, not... looks like we are doing the play that i talked about a while ago of floating the the mana to pay for the elvish reclaimer with uh with the dryad arbor yeah, if that Dryad Arbor, uh, if he could have just pointed at that and said, whoops, it's a forest now, I'm... This has been a match where the Dryad Arbor just, like, has not done anything he wants. It's been a liability every time. I said it. I said it. I said you don't want to bring back the Dryad Arbor with that Life from the Loam. You wanted to bring back the water, uh, the water Log Grove. Because the Water Log Grove, even though it hits you for mana, it's a solid mana source, as well as the fact that, like, it gives you both of your colors. Yep. And yep, scooping it up here. Jeez. Not even going to make him swing for that win. So uh, that looks like Shadow will be going on to the semifinals. Um, was going to face off against the the winner of our other quarterfinal match, uh, Aiden versus Malfi. That's so he'll be fighting either Ants or Jessica Stoneblade next round. Uh, it would be pretty sweet. Ant uh, is a very hard game one matchup. Game two, it's uh, but still. Yeah. So uh, we are the MTG Paper Legacy. Check out our um, Discord server. Check out our Discord server. There's a link in the description. Check out our Twitter. Uh, come hang out with us. Play some games. Talk Legacy. Show off all your cool, sweet old cardboard. We love seeing all that. We love talking shop. Uh, anything to, to add, Doc? No, oh, thank you everybody for coming out and hanging out with us. Uh, so we're the MTGPL and uh, keeping Legacy alive. Let's be your local meta. So see you all later.